was known as the Battle of Mill Springs, and it touched directly the lives and lands of the people living in this area. Mill Springs and Beach Grove, directly across the Cumberland River, were capable of easy defense, commanding the river and ferry landing, as well as approaches to the Cumberland Gap and the mountain pass at Jacksboro, Tennessee. Early December, 1861. It was here that Brigadier General Felix Kirk Zollicoffer of the Confederate Army established his headquarters at the home of Captain A. Russell West. This building, now known as the Metcalf House, still stands about a mile south of the mill. Zollicoffer may have later moved his headquarters to the Thompson Brown House, which stands just above the mill. Or, as some historians think, Zollicoffer may have headquartered in the mill itself. January, 1862. Brigadier General George H. Thomas, commander of the Union forces at Lebanon, Kentucky, was ordered to capture or disperse Zollicoffer's forces and take control of the Cumberland River at Mill Springs. It took 18 days of marching over nearly impassable roads due to recent rains to arrive at Logan's Crossroads, now known as Nancy, Kentucky, where they were joined by reinforcements. The Confederate Army was not secure in its position. It was undermanned and poorly equipped. Out of 4,000, only 300 men were properly armed, and that was with old flintlock muskets, shotguns, and squirrel rifles. The kicking power of some of those old firearms was so great, many soldiers complained that it was more dangerous to be behind them than in front. On the other hand, the Union troops were being armed with new English-made Enfield rifles, accurate at a half mile. General George B. Crittenden, a Kentucky son, and now in command of the Southern Army, felt it would be best to attack the enemy before reinforcements could arrive. January 19, 1862. The Confederates attacked. It was 6 a.m. on a Sunday morning. It rained heavily all morning, but fighting was intense. Both sides were determined to win. Suddenly, there was a lull in the battle. Confusion arose amidst the downpour as to whether some of the troops were firing on their own men. It was during this lull that General Zollicoffer rode up to a Union company, thinking that they were his own men, and ordered them to cease fire. Recognized as a Confederate officer, Zollicoffer was shot and killed. Lacking adequate firepower and demoralized from the death of their beloved leader, the Southern forces were defeated and forced to retreat back across the Cumberland River. While the Battle of Mill Springs involved relatively few troops and light casualties, the outcome had far-reaching effects. The fall of the stronghold at Mill Springs created the first break in the long Confederate defense line in Kentucky. It marked the beginning of Union operations that would lead across Tennessee into Mississippi.